Hey cats, it's about that time for another dose of the running news. Loads of stories to get through today, including my hot takes on another best of running shoe list from Cosmopolitan magazine and some new running shoe releases to keep you up to date. Let's get to it. Thanks for tuning in people, it is always appreciated. Help the channel to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button and clicking the bell for notifications. Also give this video a thumbs up like as well, it really helps out with the algorithm. Danke schön. Okay, story one today, I'm gonna to give you my hot takes on a new running shoe list. Best of running shoes from Cosmopolitan magazine. I'm pretty sure that this one must be like AI generated. I'd really hope it is. I did one of these a few episodes back and people really enjoyed it. So let's go for another one. Okay, let's go ready for this one. I think there's like 12 shoes in this list. The Bliss Feel 2 from Lululemon. Apparently this one's really good for dabbling in 5k through to gym and treadmill work. I can't say I've ever heard of the shoe before. It's 138 quid as well, so it's not cheap. I bet there's a better shoe out there which is more cushioned than this one that you can get for far less. The Energy 5 from Reebok or something, maybe the Velocity Nitro 2 from Puma. I mean you get two pairs of Reeboks for the price of this thing. I just don't really think this is worthy of including on a list especially like a top 12 or whatever it is so it's a no on that one next up um yeah the merrill mtl skyfire 2 seems to be a trail shoe this one apparently with plenty of grip and it ticks all the ethical boxes for being vegan well you know that's a good thing if you're a vegan and you want a vegan shoe and it's made of recycled materials and they all are these days so they're not really plus points in my book again it's a and they say that you'll be the envy of your friends if you have this shoe. <laughs> yes, I mean, you've got Vibram on the outsole, so that's a good point. But I think you've got to go for a colour that's going to look at least half decent after one run, rather than this one here. The upper's just not going to last, is it, for a trail shoe? So it's no on this one. Now, it actually seems like a half reasonable pick, this one. The third shoe is the Solomon Ultra Glide 2. It's not one I've tried out myself, I have to say. At least it's a bit of a look at this one. It looks pretty decent. It comes with that cool Solomon lacing system. I really do like that. It's a little piece of my heart in that one. I've seen these for way less than the 140 retail price that's quoted on the list though i think it could be okay for doing some easier work maybe if you're doing like couch to 5k or something though i think the inclusion of a solomon shoe here is because it's a bit of a hype beast brand right now seems to be on the catwalks and everything so yeah seems like a reasonable shoe but probably not one that i would put into a top 12 their fourth pick is again a Solomon shoe. It's that Index 02. This is the 100% recyclable one. Now I've only ever seen one pair of these out in the wild on foot. I like the idea of this shoe, but when the company behind it say that it's meant to be used for one run per week, I simply don't really understand that. A daily shoe should be something that you can sort of whip out and use whenever you like. So I won't be buying that and it's a no for the inclusion on this list. Okay, at number five, we've got a decent shoe at last, the Under Armour Flow Velocity 2. Super lightweight, this one, really responsive, really enjoyed it on foot, though I'd suggest it's hardly a shoe for the beginner, so if you're just getting into running, this one's probably going to feel a little bit firm. Great pace shoe, but using the bonus tech element of the shoe to suggest that this is a buying point is probably a bad idea considering they're phasing that out now. That will stop working at some point in the near future. So you can't really use that as a bonus to pick up the shoe. So if you plan on picking it up, make sure you're gonna keep it aside for your speed sessions. Don't think it's a daily shoe really. So I'll give this a yes actually on this list. I think it's a decent inclusion. The Nike Air Zoom running shoes are next. That's all they've listed here. Heaven knows what model this is. Kind of looks like a New Balance casual shoe to me. It's no running shoe that I've seen before or seen anybody using, which does suggest to me that it's an AI generated list. It's just been pulled from the internet somewhere. Though apparently Katie, the former senior beauty writer, suggests that you should get it. So I'd buy the Pegasus instead of that. Don't buy this one. At seven, we've got the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0. 
Isn't that like eight years old now? I know they've reissued it, like retroed it. This list is really odd. Um, I'd suggest it's all right for sort of shorter recovery runs, perhaps if you're a you know sort of heavier built runner, it could be okay. Though the person that reviewed the shoe to put it on the list said it was the best looking running shoe they'd ever had. I mean, it's pretty expensive for like eight year old tech, I think. 160 notes is big dough. It's not one that I can recommend, I don't think, really. <laughs> if you're getting into running or something, there's probably cheaper, much, you know, more exciting options. Another sensible inclusion at number eight, we've got the New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V12. That is a shoe worthy of a sort of new or seasoned runner. Plush, it's cushioned, though it's going to set you back a tidy sum. Pegasus 40, Forever Run Nitro. Triumph series from Saucony perhaps, better options really, a little bit more versatile. What about the Invincible run? Why is that not there instead of this one? So yeah, it's an all right shoe, but I don't think it's really one of the best inclusions if you're just sort of getting into running. Another good option here at position number nine is the Nimbus 25. The mini review that they've got for the shoe suggests that it's got good ventilation on the tongue. Yeah, I think they're right there. And they've got vibrant colors and glitter details. Apparently that's where it's at, Beck style. I think you've got to buy a running shoe really for the functionality and then if it looks good after that, great. I mean, you could paint your own glitter onto it if you wanted to, couldn't you? I just can't see why they've included that as a bonus sort of advantage of the shoe. At position 10, they've got the North Face Vective Levithium Trail Shoes. I'm going to have to look these up quickly. They suggest it's grippy on grass and they've got cheerful and happy colours to make the reviewer feel more motivated to go out running. Though after using the shoes, they got blisters. So make of that what you will. I'm not totally sure. Oh. Can AI comment on something like that? Can AI get blisters? I don't know. You know what? I'm just not sure I can do this anymore. They got the Sketches Go Run Swirl Tech shoe. What is that? It just looks like an on-running shoe ripoff. The Reebok Nano X2, that's a gym shoe. They've included that here as a running shoe. I guess you could run in it. You could run in any shoe, couldn't you really? But there's better options. And then last up, the classic Brooks Glycerin 20 which is apparently the most cushioned shoe the review has ever worn. They even shaved two seconds off their 5k time, apparently. I reckon my 12-year-old daughter could have probably come up with a better list than this one. In fact, I might ask her to do a review of her Air Jordan 1s and she'll probably be able to do it whilst eating a bowl of noodles and playing Roblox and it would still make more sense than this list. I really do hope it's written by some sort of AI because otherwise, you know, there's no hope, is there? Right, we've got that madness out of the way. On to some running shoe releases for you. What do you make of this insane looking shoe, people? Just released is the Nike Motiva. This is apparently a running, walking and jogging shoe. Looks like it's a huge drop from heel to toe here though. I can't actually find any details on Nike's website. In fact, it sort of reminds me of the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro in some ways. Do you see it? There's a considerable rocker here but it's Nike's quotes on the shoe design that are pure gold. Nike apparently interviewed a thousand runners to come up with this design, and they were all females apparently, not entirely sure why it's just women, but they found out that people want a roomier shoe that's not so narrow apparently, which is pretty much what Nike shoes have been like for the last 30 years. I can remember hundreds of people telling me they just want a slightly wider Nike shoe. So it looks as if Nike are finally responding to the input of runners in general. The arch and toe box are now wider as the shoe's upper is built using a different foot shape last. Initially, I thought this might be like a women's only release, but there are men's versions as well. So I know that women generally have a wider forefoot and a much slimmer heel. So maybe they've gone with that. We got the return of Cushlon foam here in the midsole, as loved for many a year in the 2010s. Though it's Cushlon 3 here. The insane rocker is quite something, isn't it? Have you ever seen anything like this? I almost want to try the shoe out purely on the bonkers nature of that curve. Can it really work as a decent running shoe with that very unique design? Nike suggests the foam has a piston-like effect. I have to say it looks like those on running models here with parts of the midsole that will compress perhaps more than others. The rear heel design here isn't all that far off looking like the Invincible Run 3 and the forefoot and heel pattern on the outsole here are practically identical to the Pegasus Turbo Next Nature. It's like 100 quid, it's a bit of a gamble for me really for a shoe that might just be absolute trash. Yeah, it's an alternative model really, I don't think it's going to take off. You never know, will people be talking about the Motiva in like 30 years time? 
Probably not. It does give me Nike Joyride vibes though. Do you remember that one? Have you worn the Motiva? Is it a great shoe? Is it worth the money? Am I talking total drivel? Let us know in the comments. Story three, I've got another absolute monster for you. Now, I have it on good authority that this isn't really being released as a high performance premium running shoe. It's specifically meant as a casual fashion model. Some of you will have seen it last year, the Puma Fast Droid. I actually got to look at this one in hand when I was over in Boston. It really is a quite insane shoe. Power plate is still here as per the Fast R Nitro. And we've got Nitro Elite foam here in larger amounts than ever. The heel profile is somewhat different though to the Fast R Nitro. You can actually see where the plate is. Maybe they've made the plate slightly wider in the heel and it's sort of almost protruding sort of out the sides there of the foam. It's almost like an anvil like hoof quality to the heel there. This one has only just been released online at several fashion retailers websites such as Slam Jam and Foot Patrol. I think one of those sites has got an eye-watering price here of 315 Earth credits. That's going to be probably one that people speculate about rather than picking up to run the local park run. I always found the Fast R Nitro Elite pretty stable, to be honest, certainly in the heel. That Pro Foam back there is just a little bit more resilient and kind of responsive, I suppose. It's unclear if it's Pro Foam back there in the Fast Roid, but I would be keen to actually see how this runs on foot one suspects it won't be quite like a prime x sort of experience without those additional blades i think in the forefoot of the adidas shoe it would have been a bit of a unstable mess maybe more a midsole monstrosity i guess the other difference here between this and the Fast Star Nitro Elite is in the outsole. On the surface, it seems the shoes are quite similar, but there are numerous differences that make this quite a unique shoe. It's very different to pretty much anything that we've seen before from Puma. Certainly an innovative design, and they're really pushing the boundaries here. Sneakers and stuff do have the black version, which is pretty much all black there, at 269 Still a lot of money, a serious price. There is lots more wild stuff to come, though, from Puma over the fourth coming months this year so do keep your eyes peeled that's all the running news for the time being if i've missed any great stories let me know on the email in the description of this video a quick musical interlude for you rewinding once again back to the noughties for white blood cells by the white stripes what a great album. They started to actually increase the range of instrumentation a little bit from previous albums, but it's still pretty minimal. You know, it's the key component pieces that will make up something exciting. Fell in love with a girl. I always remember the first time I heard that. It's raw, it's raucous. It's like the unrefined sugar that you get from a cane, sort of mixed with a firework or something. That's what it sounds like. I think I smell a rat as well as one of the most fantastic tunes sounds like something from a twisted kind of tim burton film or something you could imagine him using that track somewhere though i think we're going to be friends is my favorite track from the album i really like the way they included that in the title sequence to napoleon dynamite it just works superbly well it puts an idea into your mind about what the film's about if you've watched that film it's certainly about being on the fringes you know you're not one of the super popular people but the people that are your friends actually really matter. White Blood Cells from the White Stripes. Fantastic album. You should own it. Thanks for tuning in, people. Hope you enjoyed the running news today. Quite enjoying doing those hot takes on those lists. They're just really, really bizarre, some of them. Just spotted another one a moment ago, which is the top 11 shoes for overpronators. Anyway, it's time for me to go. Hit that subscribe button and tinkle the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Budd, and I'll be seeing you.